You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 65, CE, Cheap But Good, The Dental Guys Guide to Great Bang for the Buck Dental Education. Did you know that it doesn't take tens of thousands of dollars to get great dental continuing education? There are a ton of great, inexpensive courses out there, but how do you decide what to take and where do you find these courses? Well, that's where we come in. In this episode, The Dental Guys give you specific recommendations for speakers and courses that you can find in your backyard. When this episode is over, you won't have any excuses left about CE being too expensive. Let's get better at the basics together this week on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by The Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. And by Restorative Driven Implants. Understand, place, restore, and implement dental implant treatment from John and Wes the Dental Guys. Go to restorativedrivenimplants.com right now to sign up for the next series of courses and take your implant education to the next level. And welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John, The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And, you know, I just want to go right into it, Wes. You've been looking at a product that I'm really intrigued by. And this is just, you know, guys, we usually start to show off with, uh, you know, tell me about your day. Let's see what's going on these days. But this product is something that I saw a couple of years ago. It's been out a little while. You've gotten to use it firsthand. So what is it, Wes? And, and what do you think about? It? Yeah, a few, um, a month or two ago, um, we were sent a package <laughs> from uh, Aseptico. <laughs> yes. And uh, in the package was um, the Caliject. Mm, Now, mm -hmm. Caliject um, is a computer-assisted local anesthetic um, delivery system. Mm. And I have had the opportunity of using that, testing it uh, in my practice uh, for the last probably 45 days um, and really put it it to through its paces. Uh, John, I haven't talked about it. I haven't even talked about it I know, you it haven't. You. Well, it's been like so, a press embargo. We've kind of said, like, I don't really want you to tell <laughs> right. me until you right. until you have fully evaluated. So the question is, is artificial intelligence better than your hand when it comes to doing anesthesia? Is it better? It depends. Depends. <laughs> oh, the diplomatic answer. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the Caliject. Okay, first of all, I would say that, okay, when you look at this device, and if you're looking at the YouTube channel right now, or if you see this on Facebook, uh, you're, you're looking at a, a product, um, you know, on the screen here, and you see that this is n- n- unlike any, not really like any anesthetic delivery system you've seen. Um, basically, what you have is a standard carpial fits inside of a sterile tube that you put on like a pin okay so the pin itself first comes across as being like it's going to be too big as far as like in your hand Mm -hmm. but it's about the size of one of those ergonomic um you know instrument handles like for you know that you know the larger instruments that are easier to hold than the standard smaller instrument handles so First thing I thought of was like, is this even going to work? You know? Right, right. Okay, is, is it even going to be feasible? Like, like anything new, yeah. you know, you, you, you approach this with like skepticism. Yeah. All right, so I feel like... Okay, now, now, hold on a second. Just want to make sure I understand. So it's, because I've seen, uh, there's the wand, the, there's another product out there. Right, And different it's got that. like mm-hmm. disposable parts, but this one, if I, if I understand right, it actually uses... Your typical carpule and your typical yep. needle that you're normally using, right? It doesn't have its own yeah, special. Typical needle. You don't have to buy anything special. Okay. 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 Uh, the the ampule holder or your carpule holder, you get many of those, and you just sterilize those. 
every okay. time you use this thing. And you just put your standard, it fits the standard, uh, you know, needle hub that you have in your practice. So you could buy this thing, open it up, start using it today. Okay. okay. All right. So the pros. All right. Let's talk about the pros of this machine, uh, this computer. Uh, the pros are, is that it eliminates one variable from you and lets you concentrate on the procedure of the anesthesia. Okay. okay. So what is that variable? Okay. The variable is that when you're giving an injection with a standard syringe, an aspirating syringe, okay, you don't have a fulcrum point. Mm -hmm. So what do they teach you in dentistry? Establish fulcrum. Why? Because you can be more precise. You can be mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. accurate with your instrumentation. So you, you don't hurt people when you have a fulcrum. If the patient jerks or move, the fulcrum moves with the movement of the patient. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a standard syringe, you don't have the ability to fulcrum. Okay, yeah, you can use the tongue or, you know, kind of <clears throat> try to brace. But the key with this is that you can use it with a fulcrum. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you are under more control. You don't have to worry about as you're syringing, applying pressure to the ampule into the tissues. Right. Okay, so that's the second thing. Okay, first is fulcrum point. You can okay. establish a fulcrum. The second is when you're actually applying the anesthesia, you're thinking about how hard or how fast right. you're applying this. That this machine takes all that away from you. Gotcha. Okay, so for instance, if you're given an infiltration, it has an infiltration setting, and you you hit the foot pedal. Okay, so that's how you start it. So it has a little foot pedal, just like you're used to using a little rheostat, and and you get the anesthetic going. Okay, you prime it. Okay, it's primed. You're ready to go into the mouth. Your assistant's already done that for you. So you hit the button. Okay, and it starts syringing at a very slow pace. Okay. You let the syringe, you let the rheostat release and it self aspirates Whoa. for you. Okay. Okay. It's fancy. Then you go forward and it's set on a timer to increase the amount of anesthetic that it delivers per second so that you're not dumping a massive amount of anesthetic. So okay. you're concentrating on doing what? Controlling the direction of the needle, yeah. the position of the needle, you're watching the patient. So how long, does it take? how long does it take to do an, an, an injection? So that's pre-programmed. Pre and okay. if I was going to tell you that, you know, it, it's, it's what I, you know, it's delivered over a period of 30 seconds to a minute, let's okay. just say. Okay. I, if I told you wrong, I mean, I'm trying to look but it, here. But exactly. it's on average. It's like, would you, based on your use, you'd say it's 30 seconds to a minute. Yeah, I mean, and and you feel like, okay, this is, you know, it really helps you to realize how fast you're giving anesthetic because yeah. it's set at a certain time. Right. So, okay, for me, okay, for me, okay, I am, you could ask my team, I'm really good at giving a painless injection, okay? I don't use any lip shake technique. I don't use any vibration thing on my syringe. I, I'm really good at giving a good dental injection, okay? So for me, what I found was is that, one, it allowed me to just be even more concentrated on what was going on with the patient. I took away the fact that I have to control how much anesthetic mm -hmm. I'm giving. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, um, I feel like, okay, so I was using Sitnest, mm -hmm. okay, followed up with, Septicane. Right. Okay. So the question is, could I get rid of sitness right. and just give septicane? What do you think? Yes. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't believe it, but you can. Okay? So what's the so what's the downside? The downside, well, okay, so let me give me my last thing. Okay. Okay? okay. So for me, you know, the big thing is, you know, control. But I tell you who it really worked for and who it's been in the room the most, and who loves the device, is the hygienist. Mm. Mm. Because most all my hygienists are women, they have smaller hands, and we even have the smaller syringes for them okay. to give local anesthetic. They've been doing more anesthetic, they're more confident, they give them blocks more, 
They're feeling like, hey, I can do this better because I have more control. It's taking things away from me that I don't have to think about. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Basically, you know, I walked in and Jenny the other day, she's like, I just gave a block with that thing. And and I didn't even get nervous about it because, you know, they're not giving as much anesthetic as we're giving. Mm-hmm. And so there is some apprehension. It just is so comfortable for, for everybody to hold that wand or the actual pen. Okay. Um, it's, 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 you know, it's very tactile. It's, um, it's easy to tell what you're doing. So the, what's the con? All right, so would I buy this thing? Yes. But the cost is the barrier. Okay. okay? What's the cost? It's th- it's right now, I think they're offering a deal where you could get it for 400 bucks off. It's like 33.95. Okay. 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 So now I can't tell you that I'm going to how long is it going to take me to save an anesthetic um, by not using Sitnest first? Yeah, you're not going to save uh, you're not going to say. This is not a money-saving thing. Though. Okay, That's so not why you buy it. Here's why you'd buy it. Yeah. Advertising. Right. Advertising and value. And tell, t- John, you don't even, I don't even have to tell him. You tell him how you sell that. Yeah, and that's the thing that, you know, it's similar in some ways to scanning, and we, we still haven't had our scanning episode. One day we will. Uh, but, you know, scanning. Yeah, that's coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. But, you know, scanning, I think, for anybody that tells you that they're saving money, it's it's really uh, hard to save money on scanning. But the idea, at least the value proposition, is it's the patient's experience uh, right. is if the patient's experience is better. And then it's also a wow factor that comes into play that uh, patients the go, no one's ever done that before. I've never seen anything like that. Wow, you guys are really up on your tech. Now, I mean, you could argue about the value of that. And I think that's the big argument for this kind of equipment is it's a, it's a question of, is it worth it to you? Or, you know, if you struggle with your anesthetic technique, whether you should just go take some courses, which we're going to, perfect segue, but maybe you should go take some courses on anesthesia. But it's interesting to hear you say that it's good enough that you could eliminate sitness from your practice. Because for you to say that, I've known you for a long time, uh, you take great pride in your local. And, and I think it's great because you're amazing at it. And for you to say you could eliminate one of the most important steps in what you view as your kind of protocol, that says a lot about it. So let's... Yeah, I, it, I think, you know, it, it's an overall, like, you've got to feel when you buy this thing yeah, that you're going to be able to <clears throat> utilize it mm-hmm. in a way that's going to generate buzz in your patient's community. Right. Okay? So let me just say this. If you're a pedodontist, buy it. Mm. Hands down, mm-hmm. you need to buy it because the, you know we tell you, I, this is not another, another pro, is that for a kid, this thing is epic. Yeah, they I have can see no that. I, they, they, it looks like an instrument. Yeah, it, it looks like an instrument. And right. so, if you're a pedodontist, buy it. If you're an oral surgeon, don't buy it. Right. If you're an endodontist, don't buy it. Yeah. Um. If you're if you're doing all surgery and sedations, don't buy it. Right. If you're a general dentist and you've got a lot of hygienists that do a lot of anesthesia for you. You yeah, I'm going to look at it, it. because that kind of fits me in terms of my practice. So, John, you know, I think what I'll do is I'll package it up for you. The girls are going to hate me for this, <laughs> but I think I think I need to send it up your way and let, let you give it try a try. It out. Let's see if Aseptico let us have it for another 30 days. It is a loaner. <laughs> we didn't pay for this no, thing. No, 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 no. They're not paying us to advertise for this, but no. shout out to the guys over at Aseptico for even giving us a shot to look at I this I know. Thing. That's really cool of them just to let us try it and see what we think yeah. because they, they know we're going to tell people what we really think about it like we are yeah. and you know we're not ashamed to do that so I, I think one of the things you know, I just kind of segue into this into our show today because yeah super you know I mentioned about this. I mentioned you know maybe if your anesthetic technique is is not good uh, you should go take a course and I think that that really is you know uh, let me just let me just do a mini 30 second rant okay just super <laughs> mini. All right. 30 seconds. If you if you watched our interview, which I highly recommend you do with the Millennial Dentist podcast, okay, from the Voices of Dentistry, you heard us talk about the fact that, and Sully, I love you, brother. I mean, he's an amazing guy. And what I love about Sully from the um from that podcast, the Millennial Dentist podcast, is that he was able to admit that, you know, maybe he doesn't spend enough time learning the basics because he gets kind of 
you know, it's the sexy stuff like the digital dentistry and, you know, all these things that we put on Facebook that uh, if you, you know, you guys know our last episode or one of our last episode titles was, you know, it's Facebook, the new peer, peer reviewed journal. But what we wondered when we talked to Sully, who's kind of the prototypical newer dentist is, you know, Hey, what courses are you taking to get better at the basics? And of course, one of the biggest things we've heard about from new dentists is, hey, you guys are talking about all this really great, but very expensive continuing education. So, you know, we just don't have the money for that. We got all the student debt. You know, I'll just tell you, Wes and I were both in the same exact point when we got out of school. We didn't have a bunch of money. We couldn't well, I look back and I think, and I probably should have gone ahead, gone ahead and done a big continuum, even though I maybe didn't have the money because I probably would have paid it off quick. Uh, but knowing what I know now, I look back and I go, yeah, maybe I could have done more. But the truth is, I understand the concern about a lot of young dentists who are like, you know, I don't have the money for these big expensive courses, but what can I do to get better at the basics? Because Wes and I both believe that before you go and take necessarily these big extensive courses on selling full arch dentistry or talking about full arch dentistry or doing full arch dentistry, maybe you should know how to do a crown first. Maybe you should know how to do a composite first. Maybe you should be, yeah, because we (laughs) don't get ahead of yourselves, you know, because you need so good, man. so, So many people are like, oh yeah, I just took a course on how to do full arch, full, full mouth reconstruction. And I'm like, about this, wait, though. Let's how many crowns have you done? Like 17, you know? <laughs> let's just think about this. Let's say, let's say that this guy that's building your house says, hey, uh, I went and took a course on how to do full house reconstruction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's cool, man. What have you done? He was like, I've only done that. Yeah. And, and they, I'm like, and well, like, all I've ever built was a dog house, <laughs> but... I just took a course on how to build a like a a ten million dollar home and, and then you all him, the trades and everything, you know. Have you ever have you ever hung drywall? Right. Have you ever what what screws do you use for that? You know? Yes, um, uh, exactly. And that is the perfect analogy. What kind of <laughs> screws are you using for your drywall? Do you because right. if because the guys who do that all day every day, they would say there's only one that I use, and let me tell you why. And they might not be able to tell you the science, but they can tell you what works. They've and, been there and done it. Yeah, and so we believe in our, in our even though we're so much about research, and we're so, we, we believe too so, that you need to know the basics before you move into the advanced stuff. This is it, guys. And a lot of you guys are young listeners that have been out of school less than five, maybe even, even if you have been out of school yeah. from five to 15, 20 years. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know? Listen, John and I were there and we were like, man, we don't want to spend five to ten thousand dollars on CE or even two thousand dollars. Right. So today's episode is for you. Yeah. Because this is what John and I did in the first 10 years of our practice. Yeah. The cheap but the good CE and where to go. Like right. this year, 2018, 2019. Yep. We want you guys to know. John, let's start out with one of the biggest series of episodes that we've ever released. Okay, yep. on the dental guys. And if you haven't checked it out, we did a series this in 2018, or actually, yeah, 20, yep. 2018. Yep. Um, no, 2017. 2017. <laughs> 2017. Yeah, seems like time, time flies, flies, right? It's 2017. Go back and check it out on Endo. Of course, we'll come back and recover some of these topics, but guys, this is still current stuff. Okay, if you're listening to this now, go back and check that out in 2017 about the longest root canal we ever did. It's a series of four or five episodes on root canals. But, John, where can they go right now? And who should they be learning endo from first year, five years out of school? Or if they're just not confident and they want to start getting into molar endo, yeah. and rather than just doing anteriors, John, let's talk about where they can go. Yeah, and let me first say just quickly, why do we say endo first, okay? Because, because it's, it's one of the yeah. areas that you rarely get a re- a lot of repetitions on scared to in death, school. Man. Yeah, you you get out, you've maybe done a couple of molars, maybe maybe no molars, maybe one, maybe you've done a couple of anteriors. So you really nobody comes out of school confident in endo. So the one of yep. the first and, and it's one of the number one best practice builders ever because ever you're gonna have people come in in pain, you're gonna take them out of pain. Number two. It's a hugely profitable procedure. Your overhead's very low and your profit is very high. 
Um, and if you get good at it and you get efficient at it, you can also start to do what we talked about in other shows, which is do a root canal and a crown the same day. Man, that is a productive morning right there, a productive afternoon, yeah. just doing that one pr- couple of procedures. So I'll tell you what, we're going to put all these links yep. in the show notes. Okay. Yep. So fear not, this will all right. be in there. So our goal so you guys- with each one of these segments here is at the end to give you a few places you can go. So let's start with Endo. So uh, in 2018, 2019, here's, here's where I would go if I had $3,000 to spend. Okay. I would go out to Steve Buchanan's endo course in Santa Barbara. There is no replacement for a course like that, going out and having almost one-on-one, hands-on. It's a lot like going to a spear workshop. Okay, so you guys go, okay, I thought this was going to be cheap, but good. All right, so let's back off from there. Let's talk about some of the basic courses that we could take. Yeah, because, John, the first course I didn't take was $3,000 in endo. Exactly, the for, exactly. The first course. So, so so where do we go? Yeah, so let's back up here and say, okay, so you got the $3,000 Steve Buchanan course. How about going and seeing Steve Buchanan at the Greater New York Dental Meeting? He is going to be there this year. He's got a couple of courses on system-based treatment using the, the, the it, all of his same principles. Now, it's not going to be one-on-one, but there's going to be some group. There's going to be some participation. There's going to be some lecture. So you gonna how much are you going to spend for that? $200 a course. So you're going to yeah. be able to get a it's full- three hours. Yeah, a full half a day. Yeah, exactly. You, you do both his courses. You're going to get a full day of education from Steve Buchanan, uh, one le- one half day lecture, one half day hands on. It's going to be maybe four or five hundred bucks for the whole thing. That is a deal. Uh, another good one to look at. John West, very very good. I've I've seen him before. I've I've not taken his hands on. I've taken Buchanan's hands on. But John West at the Greater New York Dental Meeting, Endodontic Skills, a hands on workshop, three hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, 300 bucks. Yeah. Olmstead, another great, and, and I've, I have actually taken his hands on before. He is going to be at both the Hinman meeting, the Chicago Midwinter meeting, teaching a course called What's New in Endo, Biochemical Irrigation, Rotary Instruments and Obturation, which is a lecture and a hands-on. And that course for the for both the lecture and the hands-on is about 500 bucks. That's a full day. Um, I, yeah. I mean, like, think about this too, John. That guy has, I love his name of his, his course, is this Next Level Endodontics. If you, you know, if you feel like you want to go spend twenty five hundred bucks, go spend it. Right. Right. It's a two day course at his place. But listen, you can go to some of these these local, you know, regional, regional meetings. meetings. Yeah. Yeah. And easily fly in there for a little or nothing. Take these courses that are usually a half a day to a day long and come away feeling better about going back and starting to do right. some in. And one of these meetings is going to be relatively close to you most likely. I mean, you're going to you can choose from and you're going to hear about the, as we're going through these, you're going to keep hearing certain things come up. You're going to hear Greater New York, you're going to hear Chicago Midwinter, you're going to hear the Hinman meeting down in, in Atlanta. Uh, you might hear the ADA meeting, the annual meeting, which of course switches right. from city to city. Um, there's some stuff the California Dental Association meeting, but the bottom line is guys there, you might have to travel a little ways, but it's not going to be crazy. It's probably someplace that at least once in the year you could maybe drive to or take a short flight to, and all the endo courses fall into that. So I would be going for Buchanan, West, Olmstead. Now, I don't know. You put in here Gary Glassman. I've not seen yeah. him before. I've not seen him. I put that in there, and he has some cool stuff that he likes to talk about. It's a little bit fringe. We mentioned it in the show okay. um, early on. And, uh, and I put that in there. Uh, you check that out. It's a fringe class, okay? okay. If somebody wants to kind of cut on the edge, I'm not going to say not recommend him because I hear good things about Gary Glassman. And for $335, you can go hear one of the top minds in the industry. And I think that's good. You know, John, we talk about this all the time, and that's why I put somebody that's a little fringe in here. It's always good to look at these people, mm-hmm. kind of see where they're coming from, but then come back. And, and say, okay, what, how does this really work and what is the research really saying? Yeah. So a good so pathway, can- I think, for Endo to kind of summarize that segment there mm-hmm. is to say what you need to be, in our opinion, doing first is going to a regional meeting and taking a combination course, which has yeah. lecture where you go through, you really need to go through diagnosis, you need to go through access, you need to go through instrument selection. Really, a lot of the things we've gone through in our, in our if you listen to our podcasts about that, you'll get a lot of that. But go take the lecture with the same person that you do the hands-on. So you're going to take the lecture in the morning, typically. 
And then in the afternoon, you're gonna go do some hands-on, usually on extracted teeth. So go through a couple of these courses with, and, and don't just see one person. Go see Buchanan, yeah. go see West, go see Olmstead. You know, these are, it used to be Cliff Ruddle. He doesn't do a lot of stuff anymore, you know, yeah, but uh, find it. Uh, yeah. yes, he's hard to find these days. But, you know, you go and you see two or three of these people, you've only spent a few hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars by seeing a couple of these guys, and you're going to begin your journey. Now, if you start getting better and better at that, now's the time when you go take a $3,000 course. Or maybe you do yeah. that right off the bat if you just really have a passion hey, for it. you want to dive into that, but what that does, John, is that limits you on some of the other stuff. Let's talk about the next thing. Yeah, let's get into composite. it, man. Composite. Oh. Composite. Like, this you're, is epic. You're saying we okay. need to know how to do composite? Uh, John, <laughs> just you and I talked about this. It took us 10 years to feel like we yeah. were just now I want getting you, good enough. I want you to ask yourself something if you're listening to the show right now, and I want you to ask yourself this very honestly. Do you know the bonding agent that you use? Do you know <laughs> why you use it? And if your assistant was gone... Could you do it yourself? Do you even know why you're doing what you're doing? And what composite are you using? And why are you using it? Have you, have you, do you know, or are you just using what you, you got in school? You know, so this should be like, we should be the experts at composites. So Wes, tell us, where can you go to learn more about composites? Because I'm interested in this first guy you're going to talk about. i tell you what, Marcos Vargas, um, style italiano okay mm, you know mm. and th he's a 3m guy you know john i'm a 3m junkie mm -hmm. um not that i don't like other composites i mean you know it's I not like about that it's not about it's not about that the specific the reason why i say is that i ran into marcos in an evening in my hometown <laughs> okay so cool. my 3m rep comes to me and he says hey we're having a four-hour hands-on course on style Italiano from Marcos Vargas. I mean, I was like, well, Googling this guy. Who is this guy? Okay, operative dentistry. He works at the University of Iowa. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the guy has, a, he's a visiting faculty member at Spear Education. <laughs> nice. So, I mean, the guy knows what he's doing. Okay, so I just typed in his name, Marcos Vargas. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I had great experience with him on how to do just good posterior composites and yeah. make them look good. Yeah. And just in four hours in an evening on Thursday, I came back and my wife was sitting on the couch watching TV. She's like, how was it? Because I know she knows, she's a dental hygienist, how some of these evening courses can go. I said, look, I said, I've taken all day courses from people. I said, this was one of the best evenings I spent with a master. Mm. I said, I learned so many things. And you know how much I paid for that? Oh, man. Zero dollars. Because it was AGD? Or was that three no, M? Because it was sponsored 3M by 3M. was sponsoring it. Wow. So I I paid zero, zero dollars for this. And that's okay? the other they, thing, maybe a pearl that we want you guys to get from this stuff is, besides the regional meetings, the next place to look is is after if you if you look to your regional meetings, you get I've already seen those guys or I want something different. Right. Go to your reps. For this is where reps, I feel like, really yeah, can be important. because all these courses were mentioned are sponsored by people. Yeah, so go to your rep from whatever composite system you're using, or if you don't have a rep, find a, find a rep that's repping a high-quality composite system, like 3M, like Kerr, whatever it might be. Pick your composite and say, hey, what courses are you guys doing in our area? Uh, it's the same yeah. with Endo. A lot of times Tulsa will bring in some of these same people to your town or somewhere near you to do a course sponsored by them so that they get you to buy the stuff. So listen to this. You know, I, I just typed in Marcus. Uh, we did a lot of research for this show, and I found a great Academy of General Dentistry meeting. It's a state, a state Minnesota Academy of General Dentistry is hosting Marcos Garga, uh, Vargas on Friday, October 5th, 2018. It's a two-day course. Mm. It's how much it costs. If you're a member of the AGD, Okay, and you're you're inside. You're a new AGD dentist. Yeah. First three years out of school, seven hundred ninety five bucks. Oh man. Okay. Sixteen That's hours. Just, sixteen I'm gonna, hours. Let me, let me give you the five five learning objectives. Yeah. Five learning objectives. One, utilize adhesives to obtain sensitive free restoration. Number two, select a direct resin composite for aesthetic restorations. Three, produce ideal proximal contact in class twos. Four, understand indications, contraindications, advantages and disadvantages of what? Bulk fill 
composites. Mm. Number five, implement protocols for high caries risk patients. Mm. That right there. Very basic. And yet you're going to get like from somebody like that, you're going to get the basic and you're going to get the advanced in two days. Dude, that's like $400 a day. You know, I mean, that's just yeah. nothing for what you're getting in terms of the hours of CE, but not just the hours of CE, the quality. It's amazing. So, so you know, that's a great ahead, place. Tell us about our next guy because yeah. he's a crazy. Yeah. We've heard him too. Yeah. So I've got three other people I want to mention to you to look at for composite. Um, and there's lots of good people, but these are people we've seen and we know are good. Jason Smithson. You're going to, if you have ever been uh, on uh, Dental Town, you've heard about Jason Smithson. He has a whole mega thread uh, about uh, his disciples. He's an amazing <laughs> composite dentist and uh, he teaches some courses. We saw him very similar to this Vargas course we're talking about. We saw him at the Tennessee uh, AGD. And he did a same kind of thing, couple day course, uh, one day of lecture and demo, and then the second day, all hands on, posterior in the morning, anterior in the afternoon. And it was it was amazing. I mean, I got a lot out of that. I think it cost us, I don't know, five or $600 for the whole thing. Uh, well worth it. Uh, another one that's uh, quite good, Bob Margis. Bob Margis is somebody who has really come on strong in the last few years uh, with with his courses on diastema closure and treating the worn dentition. He has mm. got those two courses at the Chicago Midwinter, with her, which, which are both um, hands-on. Uh, I mean, who titles a course how to close a diastema. Only, I saw that. Only I saw somebody that. that is really confident that they can teach you how to do that. So he's another person to definitely check out. Those classes, I looked them up. If you go to Chicago Midwinter, take Bob Marge's courses, they're like 200 bucks a piece. Crazy. Okay, so, so John, yeah. let me just sell this course for you, okay? So how many people have diastemas? They want them closed. They don't want to spend $3,000 on Invisalign, okay? Yeah, or tons. braces or whatever. Okay, there's a ton. You come back. I guarantee you within a month, you'll sell two class four composites. Yep. Okay. And guess how much you're going to charge for those? Probably four or 500 bucks yep. per. Yep. Per. Thousand dollars. You're going to be able to do it in probably an hour and a half. Let's just say you're, you're learning. Okay. You just pay for it. Exactly. It's a quick payback on it. these courses. All these courses yes. are like the quickest payback of anything you'll ever take because you come back and immediately you cut time and you get a better uh, quality restoration. So let's go on. Bob Marges, great. What else? What about Corky Wilhite? Corky Wilhite, oh, yeah. one of the best composite guys I've ever seen. Amazing hands. Uh, he's an AACD genius. Um, and he gives a couple of courses. One of the courses that he gives, which again, I, I love the uh, the names of these. It's called Undetectable Class four restorations, undetectable. Yep. $340 hands-on at the Hinman Dental Meeting in Atlanta. So you get a ma true master for a, a, an afternoon to sit down and, and show you what he does and, and really critique you on his stuff. So, you know, it, these are people that you can go right in and immediately feel yourself getting better. I mean, don't you, Wes? Like, you, you watch, you, you're like, start yeah. off, and at the end, you're like, I feel I'm already better at my composites. Well, I think, too, we see a lot of the super cool, uh, super, you know, s stuff that's like mind-boggling on Facebook from from these guys. Okay? Yes. Honestly, they, they have see some, some amazing, amazing stuff. things. That's not what these courses are about. Right. These courses are about tried and true, proven protocols, step-by-step. Mm -hmm. step, I mean, like, literally, when you go to a Jason Smithson class or a Vargas class, you go step by step yep. how to do this, how to scrub, why to scrub, why to blow air, how much air to blow. And you pick up little pearls. Like, I'll never forget somebody we're not even talking about, but I won't mention their name because it'll go down a path. I know because John and I love the guy. Is that I'll never forget, like, this guy says, okay, take and take your quick tip, okay, your micro brush, and go down in your prep and take it and wipe it on your patient's napkin mm. and then go back in. And you know what he said? He said, you know how I know that that thins it properly? Now, he was talking about this one particular bonding agent. He said, because we've studied it, <laughs> and we know that it thins it properly. And yeah. so do this. That is what we're talking about. Yeah. The pearls that you get from this will change your practice. Yeah, so right Don't there, you've got a couple thousand dollars that you can spend on endo and composite and really up your game uh, and, and really get, I mean, probably there, that's 50 hours of CE. 
50 Amazing. hours of CE for probably a thousand bucks, maybe 1200 bucks through these courses we've just told you. So, all right. So, 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 so let, me, let me interject yep. here yeah, because yeah. we got a product of the week this week. Actually, we've got two products of the week. Mm. Okay. And now's the perfect and time for one. Now's the perfect time for one because guess where I found out about this product? Okay. At one of these regional meetings, I was setting in a course from an instructor and they threw up just a little case study. They were like, okay, guys, check this out. Mm. And they showed this product, Opaluster from Ultradent. Ah, yes. So Wes's product of the week is Opaluster from Ultradent. So what is Opaluster? So we all have the kids in our practice, even the adults that um, are embarrassed to smile. Mom's sitting there and they're like, so we talking like, y'all, has this brown stain <laughs> or these white spots on the teeth been here a long time? Yeah, since the kid's teeth came in. And and he's starting, Johnny's really starting to get concerned about the way he looks. Yep. And she's starting to get concerned about, what can you do about that, doctor? And so, well, we have some stuff to treat that and it's called op Opaluster and it's inexpensive per tooth charge and what it is, is it's controlled removal of the fluoride-rich layer of enamel. Okay, so what do I mean by controlled? So opaluster, and I won't go into it too intense, is basically hydrochloric acid, 6%, 6% okay? And basically, you go through a protocol. It's totally safe. It's been around for years. And you scrub the tooth down with the, the hydrochloric acid, and it removes up to, per treatment, 200 microns of that's 0.2 millimeters of the superficial fluoride rich <laughs> layer that creates the nasty brown and white stains. Mm -hmm. And so this really is a practice builder. Will you make a ton of money on this? No, but let me tell you what, I just recently treated two people with it and the parents, the grandparents are raving about it mm. so much. So guess what? I got a new patient from it. Wow. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Is that it's all about producing some buzz around something that's so simple to implement that it's just a no-brainer. Well, and so it's a solution out. to a problem that exists in all of our practices. You know, we yeah. all John, have John, you've been patients. using it. Oh, yeah. Hey, I've used what? it for years. And, it's certified uh, gluten-free, too. I just saw that. Oh, that's <laughs> Well, now I know I can use it because I was holding right. out for the gluten-free. No, it's yeah. a great product. Uh, Alternate makes great products. I mean, you know, they 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 really do their do their homework, and you can usually rely on the stuff that they make being decent. And this is another great one. Uh, and and again, I love the fact that you learned about that at a regional meeting. You know, it's so good. So let's talk about the next uh, the next place that we want you to maybe spend some time, where we feel like there's a need. You know, another thing you get out of school, we hear a lot of people say is, well, what material do I choose for my crowns? And then just basic crown technique. You know, how much reduction do I need? Uh, how do I prep? You know, what type of margin design should I have? Again, you can go back and mm -hmm. listen to our podcast on that, but we want you to do more than just listen to a podcast. You know, let's just be clear on that, guys. You know, listening to podcasts is not a replacement for going <laughs> to hands-on education. Watching YouTube is not a replacement for a hands-on course, guys. So come on, Facebook quit that. Facebook is not the new peer-reviewed yeah, journal. Just quit that crap. So where <laughs> can you where can you go to, for that? I've, we got two names that we'll throw out there for you. One is George Priest. Wes, you've seen Man. George before. I've seen George yeah. before. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, I found this course again, Greater New York Dental Meeting uh, this, this year. Um, check it out. Um, he's there for a half day, innovative crown protocols that challenge old standards. Mm. I mean, like this is the kind of stuff that I dream of, you know, yeah. like you go to a, you go to a course and you listen to George Priest get up on the stage. You're going to come away in a half day yep. and it's going to change your practice. Yeah. You're going to know you're going to be writing stuff down like gangbusters because this guy is going to come at you with so much evidence right. for what you need yeah. to be doing in your practice when it comes to crown protocols. You're going to be like knowing what you, you're going to be knowing it. And I, right. I really like George. You like Every, George. Anything that George Priest does, you should see. <laughs> Let me just tell you, right. because everything I've ever seen him do has all been a great, he, he understands how to teach. He takes complex ideas like veneers, which is complex, and yeah. he's able to break it down. And I learned a lot from him when I was starting off in implant dentistry. Also, great course. I remember him at the Hinman like 
when I first got out of school and he's putting up these huge pictures on the screen of porcelain, beautiful veneer porcelain. And I was like, that's the kind of veneers I want to be able to do. How do I do that? He's going through step by step, catch anything he does. You will not regret that. Uh, Gerard Sheesh, who's uh, out of uh, Louisiana, has some great courses that are very similar on a lot of material selection as well as veneers. Excellent, excellent, excellent veneer course I saw from him a few years ago. Uh, and he should be in at the Hinman too because yep. he's one of those chair members down there. He's exactly. chair in and, restorative dentistry. Yep, and he does come to the Hinman uh, not necessarily every year, but he has, mm-hmm. he has come. And while we're on that topic, I'll just throw in just dental materials because I think that we're kind of talking about that with crowns. And, mm-hmm. you know, just a couple of example courses that you can look at is, you know, good old Gordon Christensen. Now, you know, you guys know we don't necessarily agree with everything that uh, CRA says or what Gordon says, but we think he does a great job of summarizing current uh, materials, and he has a great course, Ate the Hinman. Another example, selecting the best crowns for 2018. That costs $80. You get a whole morning of talking about all of the possible materials that are out there and Gordon's think, take know, on them. Let me say this about Gordon. Gordon gives you enough to kind of like go away and say, okay, I need to find out more about that. Exactly, okay? exactly. And I think like people like George Priest, you come away from that course and you're like, okay, I'm going to go back and actually do what he just showed Right, right. And, it completely you know, you, agree. Do you agree with that? Yeah, do that's a great, that? I think that's a great summary of the difference between somebody like a Christensen who gives you ideas and somebody right. like Priest or somebody like Smithson that actually puts those things into practice. That's kind of the next level. And you, it's right. reflected in the cost. You know, you spend 80 bucks to hear Gordon. Don't expect to know how to do everything. Just yeah. expect to hear some good stuff. Then you go spend three or $400, spend a half day with Smithson. You're going to come out knowing how to do some things. A couple other quick things on uh, materials while we're on it. The ADA meeting this year. Uh, a couple great courses, The Effect of Translucency on Zirconia Properties by Howard Roberts, who's the head Amazing. of the head of restorative at Kentucky. He's talking about these newer translucent zirconia crowns. Should we be using them? Are they dangerous? Are they going to break? Uh, at 3M has a great course there with Art Volker, who's talking about indirect ceramic restorations, making predictable happen. Uh, and also a good one here that's uh, by the, in fact, I really like this guy. He's the ADA Foundation's uh, Research Center Director, and he's talking about new dental materials, not your father's composite. He's talking about degradation-resistant polymers, self-healing filler particles, coupling agents that provide smart defense systems for restorations. So this is the kind of stuff, I mean, this is at the ADA, and it's free. All three of those courses I just mentioned cost you zero dollars, and you well, can you gotta go. Pay to get into the meeting. Well, I know, but in addition to your registration, though, if you're going I'm to these saying, meetings, hey, listen, it's listen, free. Take it easy. I'm just saying it's not truly free. Okay? <laughs> you're right. You're right. You do have to pay your registration fee. You're right, you're right. man. Yeah, they're just taking but, full advantage of you. Right. <laughs> and consider this though that like we're just mentioning a few meetings here. Yeah. Okay. And, and honestly, though, don't get caught up. Like, this is where you need to go. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing the research for you guys. You, you guys are always asking us, how do we know all this stuff? It's because we've went, and we still go. Yeah. And you don't have to spend $5,000 to learn how to bond. Yeah. You know, you don't have to spend 3000 to learn how to do endo. I tell you, somebody else that's changed my practices is is how to do dentures with Joseph Massad. Oh, okay? yeah. Oh, now, yeah. It, it's, he's becoming harder and harder to find, yep. okay? And and more people are emerging in this area. But right now, I want to give you two courses from Joe Massad. The first one, if you're really wanting to kind of break down some of those things that, hey, I'm moving forward with some of those implant retained prosthetics. Like we're talking about the two implant overdentures that's the standard of care, mm-hmm. okay? we John and I talk about this stuff. And you know what? Why not learn it from a master, Okay. Because this is the guy. And at the Greater New York Dental Meeting, here we go, another regional meeting where you can take your wife, your kids, have a great time in November, do some shopping, and and also see a great guy speak for a half day on the diagnosis and prognosis for implant-retained prosthetics. I mean, amazing. And, And here's the thing is like facial analysis, how to understand functional space, what you need. All those things he's going to cover, 
every time I've went and hear, heard him speak, I come away with something that I'm going to take back and implement immediately. John? Yeah. And another person that I was, you mentioned, you know, people who are kind of coming up in this that are good because this is kind of a big hole in, is, in the dental world like it. is dentures and dentures and partials. I mean, who is teaching how to make a proper partial? Because what? Oh, flex partials, right? We'll just make flex partials. Oh my right. gosh. I don't want to even get into that. But w- here's a great guy you need to look into. It's his name is Nate. There's a piece of we don't talk about. I know we can't, we can't go into that. We, Nader Sharifi, Nader yeah. Sharifi. And like I, your guys are, who is this guy? Well, I know I, three years ago, he was at the Hinman meeting and my associate who really wanted to get better at dentures went and saw his partial and denture courses. He comes out. I didn't go with him because I was like, I don't know who this guy is. And he's a Yeah. And so I, he, he comes out and he goes, let me just tell you, he's like, that guy was the easiest to understand lecture I'd ever seen. So I went and saw him the next year. He's amazing. He can talk. He has a great course that I took implant assisted removable prosthodontics. He's talking about partials. And then he's talking about how can you add implants to partials to make them better. He's got a course on all on four uh, and how to convert converting uh, prosthetics and all on four. So he's got your basics covered, partials and denture techniques, and then he does a lot of implants and how those things all relate. He's definitely somebody I would go check out. The course that he's doing um, at, uh, uh, at the last one that we saw, it was $350. That was all day lecture and hands-on. Uh, that he had one on partials and he had one on implant-assisted partials. And I think he even had one on locator overdentures as well. So Man, the great, that's great a great guy to look mine. at. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So everybody comes out of practice and like they want to do this, this, this next thing. And I feel like that it is one of those super cool, super sexy things that everybody wants to do their first veneer case. Right. They want to really do it. They want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, they want to do it. Did you do 12 today? I did. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah, dude. That was Sweet. my that was my morning. That, so. I mean, that's the cool thing. Yeah, super fun. But John, John, you know what I tell you? Let me tell you something right now. I'm gonna tell you something right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna lay it down right now. I'm gonna man. lay I love it down. It. <laughs> you know what? Veneers, hardest thing you ever do. Oh, they're hard. They are hard. They're hard. Yeah, you know, I, I don't I don't think we need to make them easy. I don't think we need to make them sound easy. Correct. It's hard because there's a different way to prep each case. Totally agree. There's 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 a lot of planning. There's a lot of ways to mess up. Seating a veneer case. I'll tell you what. Stressful, most the most most stressful thing you can oh, man. do. It's so it's stressful. very difficult. It's it's not easy. It takes yeah. a lot of time. It takes not being distracted. Listen, I will tell you right now, I love, I love it. Okay. But but it's taken a long time to feel good about doing it. And every every time I do a case, I really make sure I'm doing it the right way because it is not easy. So John, tell us a little bit about veneers and aesthetic dentistry. Who can we go see? Yeah, so I'm gonna give you um, some different names, but I'm gonna first say, just like Wes said, I'm, I don't know that there's a written in stone thing, but I think you need to see three veneer courses with a hands-on component before you do your first veneer, unless you did a ton of it in dental school. I mean, it's just yeah. too hard. People, totally love, agree. they, they want to make it sound like it's easy. It's not easy. So here's some names. The, the, the best names in the business, in my opinion, are Galib Gurel, who is oh, probably maybe the master at this. He has been, uh, he's out of Turkey. Uh, he has written numerous books uh, along with uh, Pascal Magna, who's another master at this. But these guys are super, super high level. Now, if you can catch them at a course, good luck because it's very hard to find them at anything except like the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry meetings. But if you want to go to courses that are a little bit more accessible, the two people that I would look at would be, one is Ray Bertolotti. Now, we could talk about Ray Bertolotti for a long time on this show. That was who I was going to mention about the quick tip and the white it on. (laughs) Yeah. We love Ray Bertolotti. One day, and there's some people out there. Shout out to some of those that are listening right yeah, now. They know who he is. With us, you know yeah. who he is. Oh man! <laughs> I mean, I will never forget going out. I told you about this. I went out to Yosemite a few years ago, and oh, I was man. so I didn't really even know how good it was going to be. Ray puts on a course every year in Yosemite, and he had him and Ed McLaren for two oh, days. Him and Ed McLaren geeking out about bonding, ceramics, veneers. Anyway, amazing. 
But Bertolotti, <laughs> uh, now Bertolotti, I will tell you, and I, if he's listening to this, he'll know. I think I'm, I'm smiling more yeah. about this episode than ever because oh, you know what? Because it's like it's nostalgia, just, right? It's nostalgia. It's, it's so good. <laughs> it's like Ready Player One. I know. <laughs> it's so good. I know. So, so Ray, now let me just tell you, Ray's a little crazy, okay? Yeah, he He's is. a little crazy. What I, <laughs> but mean, I like it. But I love it because he's very, very strongly opinionated about things. He has oh, yeah. done a lot for dentistry, and he is he deserves to be able to be very opinionated. But his veneer technique that I mm. learned very early on is still a lot of the same provisionalization that I use today because it really has been basically foolproof. So go see Bertolotti. He's a little harder to find these days unless you want to go out to California. Um, the other person that I have gotten turned on to in the last couple of years is Brian LeSage. Now, Brian is an AACD, not just member, not just fellow, but examiner. So he's one of the people Amazing. that actually grades the uh, American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry people when they submit their veneer cases. You he's put a, an amazing course in here too. Yeah, yeah. And he is uh, he has a great course, did it at the Hinman, called Veneers Rarely a Crown, Rationale mm. and Systems for a Responsible Aesthetic Practice. Now, he's a Beverly Hills guy, and one of his claims to fame is that he doesn't do crowns. Now, that's I don't know if that's 100% true. If you see his course, you'll understand what I mean. He's trying to make a point. He's trying to make a point that we shouldn't be cutting teeth down. So he talks about how you can go about a great uh, prep to preserve enamel and get a good result so you can avoid doing crowns. Interesting. Again, again, listen, is that you need to take at least three of these courses. Yeah. And this is a three hundred this is a three hundred dollar course, the one for with the sage. Yes, it's, not uh, bad. it's not expensive. You know, go take a couple of these courses before you start uh, trying to prep veneers, or else you're gonna have a you're gonna have a bad time. John, before we go into the last segment here, I want you to give your product of the week, but just a little teaser. The last segment we're gonna talk about occlusion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and hear one of the greats for less than two hundred dollars. You can hear one of the greats. John, tell us about your product of the week before we get to that. Yeah, so interesting thing that has happened in, it's not necessarily new, but in the OSHA world is uh, in the last couple of years, there's been a requirement that's been put into place that when you're taking instruments in and out of your operatory, that you have to have them covered. You have to yeah, have them- If you want them, us to do it, hey, before you say this, yeah. if you want us to do an OSHA episode on what you truly should be doing- Yeah, we can rock that. We can rock that. Yeah. Send us a message. Yeah, let us know if like you like that. Let yeah. us know if you want to hear that. Ultimate Geek yeah. episode, man. An OSHA episode. <laughs> That's awesome. Be a snoozer. Be a real snoozer. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. But I love it. I don't mind. See, that's the thing is we like this I stuff. I can talk shop. Yeah. Let's talk about colony forming units. How many, CF, how many CFUs? Hey. Do you <laughs> hey. How many PPMs? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. All right. So, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's totally lost so the trailer. So, okay, so OSHA says that you have to carry your instruments from the room to the autoclave in a locking tray or lock, some type of locking container. So this oh, is, man. for those of you who are using cassettes like Wes, you're already doing that because you just close the top of the cassette and you're You said good that to like go. I'm some special kid. No, I mean, but, <laughs> no, I like it. Like, I mean, I wish I could use cassettes. If I had 17 autoclaves, I could do it in my practice, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, but, man. But, but I, like- I just bought one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. But what what that means is if you're not using cassettes, which, which I wasn't, I'm using- <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, good. It's just a good episode. <laughs> but if you're not, if you're using, if you're using trays, which is what I'm using, and bags, now what the problem is is that you finish your procedure and your instruments are all sitting there on the tray, and really you can't safely bring them into there. And if the ocean inspector oh, comes, oh no, yeah, the ocean inspector <laughs> comes into your office and you're you're screwed. So oh, um, I discovered, <laughs> now I was thinking about going to cassettes, but like I say, if you go to cassettes, if you have an office that's got a, a fairly big number of people there, you're going to need a lot of cassettes. You're going to need a, a lot of autoclaves. So Things so, that want to make you go, hmm. hmm. That's right. So to the rescue comes Zerk, as they oh, usually do, because Zerk yeah. is an idea company that has great products, and they have a really, really nice locking tray. So the deal is yeah. basically you've got the tray, that, which is like what you're used to using, 
but it has it's a really nice, nice. Clear, it is like nice. It, it actually, I know it sounds silly, but like the plastics that they use, it sounds silly, but they're super nice. They are, they're sparkly. They're like, they're a nice finish. They look very pro. They don't fade after you, after you clean them, after you spray them. John, how long have you had these in your practice? Because I know that uh, the, our friends at Zerk who are um, friends of the dental guys, mm -hmm. uh, you've been using these for a while. You yeah, tried them out and you were like, I'm buying them, dude. Yeah, a few months now I've been using them because we switched everything over. And part of it was just to, to get in compliance with OSHA. And mm -hmm. uh, But I really like them. They also have a nice anti-slip on the bottom of them. When you put them on your on your bracket table, they don't fall. They don't slip off if you, if you, mm. you know, hit them with your arm or something. Anyway, if you're not doing some type of cassette, I would highly recommend that to get compliant with OSHA and just to overall be more organized – that you look at Zerk's locking trays. They have them for tubs and trays. Highly recommended. Definitely try yeah, them out. link in the description down below. Check them out, uh, yep. Zerk, because time is everything. That's right. Good <laughs> job. So, Wes, what is the super secret oh, continuing man. education course that you can see Dude. one of the greats? What is that all about? One of the greats. How about Gary DeWood for $195? What? Yes. What? Gary DeWood. I could not believe it. I was like, Gary DeWood for 195 I said, what is this? For a three-hour course mm -hmm. from 9 to 12 in the morning at the Greater New York Dental Meeting, diagnosis and management of the worn dentition, okay? Wow. But not only Which that. Which is basically okay, so, straight out of the spear stuff. Yeah. How about that? And then how about take another course? 195 bucks uh -huh. designing an occlusion. Oh man. Okay. Another one to four. Can course. I just say that the Great New York meeting is like killing it? It They're keeps coming up, it. man. They're crushing it. Keeps it. coming up. Yes. I mean, Good listen job, to Greater just New this York. on the occlusion thing here. Yeah. Okay. The history of occlusion thought and practice, the understanding of three reference points used in dentistry. And number three, to utilize each of these references in planning. Oh, I man. mean, this is the stuff. And so this you can see stuff. all of this for less than $200 a course for it's these amazing. occlusion courses. That is, yeah. I mean, so guys, what we want you to take from all this, this is, we have really crammed it in. I mean, we really haven't spent a ton of time on each one of these courses, but it, we have given you now probably 15 to 20 names, 15 to 20 names of people that the dental guys have personally listened to personally believe are legit. There's a lot more yeah. of them out there. This is just a start. And these are people that you can go see right now, 2018, 2019, at places you can easily get to where you don't have to spend a lot of money. So stop saying continuing education is too expensive for me. Stop saying I can't afford it. Go take some of these courses. Get good at the basics. Even if you're 20 years out, Go back and revisit what you think you know about endo, what you think you know about composites, what you think you know. That's what Wes and I try to do every year. We say, here's what we think we know about certain topics. Let's go back and revisit. We were just talking about the other day. We were saying, you know what we really need to do? We need to go to a pathology course because it's yeah, been going. a few years since we've taken a good pathology course. It's like somebody like Doug Dam. Uh, who's yeah. amazing from Kentucky, we need to go take an update on pathology because we just feel like we haven't had, it's been a few years, things change. You got to have that attitude in order to keep growing in your practice. So no matter where you're at, you can grow if you start with some of these basics that we've given you. Yep. So it's following, you know, following up, you know, I, I want to go right into, you know, this is one of the things we've talked about a lot on the show is as we kind of come to a close is how to figure out who to get on your team you know and you go and you take these courses you go and you learn how to do a great crown right you go and you learn about materials and one of the things that you need as uh, somebody on your side is a great lab you need a team and the lab is part of that team so i think one of the things we want to just talk about today for just a moment is the Dental Crafters Network. Because Wes, you know, that's been, uh, when we take these courses and we come back, like a denture course, like a crown course, right. we come back and we're like, all right, so who do I need to call? I need to call my lab. Well, and I and think we need to, too, we need to bounce that, some of the stuff off the lab, of lab. Why can't your lab guy go with you, you know? 
Ooh, like that's they a good can point. totally go to these things with you and they will. Like I- I've had lab guys go to courses with me and you come away unified. Like, okay, yeah, great point. This makes sense. And they actually bring up stuff that you're not going to think about. Speaking and of which, in just a few what? weeks. Oh, John, a few weeks. We're going to be bringing you a live example of what a great lab technician brings to a conversation when we interview somebody very big. It's going to be amazing. So we're going to show you that. But I agree with you, Wes. Like having the lab tech with you at a course, you both well, this learn. Is, this is why we like the Dental Crafters Network because they have taught John and I look mm-hmm. how to communicate properly with the lab, how to utilize the lab to its fullest abilities. I, I, I really appreciate you know, if you listen, if you're looking, if you're coming out of school or if you're in a situation where you're just frustrated with your lab, your lab is not moving forward, they're stuck in a rut, they don't come up with ideas. Like your laboratory is not coming up with solutions or they're right. not challenging you. Right. Okay. They're not teaching because, you something. Right. Because when I go to Lowe's to buy my drywall, And when I go to buy my drywall screws as a contractor, I guarantee you the fastener guy is going to come to me and say, hey, I got a better fastener. It's new. And I want you to, I want to tell you about it. And Mm -hmm. I know everything about it. That's the Dental Crafters Network. That's right. They're the technical people behind the scenes that understand it. So forget the frustration and call the Dental Crafters Network and sign up. Um, It's one solution, infinite possibilities. And that's 1 800 472. 8302. Go check them out. We tell them that, uh, tell them the dental guys sent you. We just had, we just had a listener just today, uh, sent us a private message on Facebook. Hey, tell me about that lab again. Well, like just try them out. We've never had somebody try them out. That is not said. Thanks guys for showing me the way to go because it's changed the way that I practice. If you have enjoyed this show, if this show has meant something to you and I, I mean, I really feel like this has been good stuff, Wes. I mean, it's been Like you can take this and tomorrow you can sign up for something that could totally change the way that you practice. I know it did for me and I know it did for Wes. So if this has been a show that's meant something to you, we want you to do some stuff for us, if you would be so kind. One is to leave us a review on iTunes. That's huge for us because this is how a lot of people find out about our show when they Google dental podcasts. Mm. We want our stuff to come up. Go on Facebook, uh, leave us a review as well. That also helps us to kind of rank higher when people are searching for stuff on Google. And we'd also love it if you would actually give us your feedback. Give us some questions. Give us some, if you liked what you're seeing, tell us if there's things you want to hear more, if we need to, you know, focus on if something else. If we don't respond, it's because we ain't. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're because, sorry. Yeah, dude, we're try, we try <laughs> we're to get them 11 all. veneers today and <laughs> putting in some implants. That's right. I mean, guys, we have families. We're doing the best we can. Keep hounding us hey yeah just keep coming at us man keep Keep coming keep telling us hey i want that osha episode i want that osha episode i want that osha episode (laughs) we'll bring it don't worry but hit us up on facebook hit us up on twitter you know tell us what you like give us your feedback we're going to continue to watch us follow us on youtube you know absolutely absolutely check out the video live streaming we're doing some more of that stuff hey share it across your your facebook feed share it with your friends you know people don't know about the dental guys any other way other than you guys sharing with your friends, your dental colleagues about what we are about. And that's next level dentistry. That's you right. Know? And your next level is not necessarily taking a $10,000, a $5,000 course. Your next level could be the Jason Smithson course, the Margus course, the Endo course, and it could change your practice, you know? And that's what we're about is about helping you take your practice to the next level. So for John, I'm Wes, and we are The Dental Guys.